Okay, this is part 30. Our next example is a man named Bob who did both good and bad deeds. When he was younger, he got into trouble and with authorities and had to spend some time in community service. In his middle years, Bob got involved with some real evil people. He was responsible for seven people getting murdered. He was set up for life, or was sent up for life. While in prison, Bob began to really examine his life and how it had been a total waste. He knew he had gone, he had done a real wrong and felt real guilty over it. While in prison, he was given a Bible by the Gideons. Faithfully, he read it in a night and day, trying to find the answer to life and everything about it. He became convinced that Jesus was telling the truth. And in silence, uh, silent prayer one night, he decided that he was going to find the truth of, of this Jesus. And he decided that no matter what, he was going to lay hold of the truth. He asked the Lord to show him the truth. He became a, fan, a fanatic in scripture study. He read it, and then he had meditated on it. Bit by bit, Holy Spirit began to work on Bob and gently brought him along the narrow way. In the course of the next three years, Bob was brought down via the power of the Holy Spirit. He was convicted of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Bob knew he was dead inside. The conviction of this death grew as time passed. Finally, Jesus came to him. Your trouble, Bob as that you do not have agape love. Jesus gently said, Bob readily confessed it was the truth. Jesus showed him in the spirit what agape love was. He looked it into the depth of it, the height of it, the breadth of it. Jesus said, will you agape love? But struggled for a moment and finally said, yes, Lord. And at that moment, Jesus entered into the Bob, Bob's holy of holies. The union was accomplished. Bob died and went to heaven. Jesus was waiting for him. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord, or the, of thy, uh, thy Lord. Okay, that was just an illustration of it. The difference between Sue and Bob was an uh, agape love issue. Bob admitted he was lost, admitted he was a sinner, admitted he deserved death. Over the course of three long years, he proved his faith in Christ was genuine, as God tried, tried it in the fire. He did as Christ commanded, and he continued in his doctrine until he found the truth. Agape love and that truth set him free. Bob allowed the Holy Spirit to convict him of sin and judgment to his heart of hearts. And he never turned back from the rebuke and the reproof of the Lord. Bob knew that the mental commitment was not enough. He knew there was more, much more. Sue, on the other hand, would never admit she was lost sinner. She never would admit that she deserved anything but life. Her faith was in her works and her own capacity to filial love. Sue tried to thought she was going there to get paid from heaven. That's what she thought was going to happen. Bob didn't. He didn't try to put him in debt. And keep in mind, um, ah, I, I can cover that later. All right. So the grand delusion is therefore that the filial love of man is the love of God. In conclusion, then, we, we have found that the fall of man brought him into utter subjection and control by Satan and his demons. It brought man to utter destitution. Within, he died a spiritual death. He lost agape love. Uh, he is in very deep trouble with the Lord for his actions. We found that through genetics and the DNA code, that the sin nature is passed down to all men and women via the male sperm. All men are thus condemned to eternal ruin. There is only one escape, Jesus Christ. We must all, one by one, come to the living Christ, and we can only come to him via the straight gate and narrow way. He gave us no options. He gave us no exceptions. All must come the same way, for God is, the respecter, uh, is not a respecter of persons. Will you come? Will you submit your spirit and soul to the conviction of the Holy Spirit? Will you enter the straight gate? Will you walk the narrow way? Now what he's talking about is you keep going. Even in the rebuke, you keep going after Jesus. That's the narrow way. So even though you're going, get out of here, you suck, you're this, you're that, keep going and keep pursuing him. Just keep doing it. And that's what agape love is. You keep doing this over and over. Just Quit worrying about, you know, trying to put him in debt, trying to do him here. Just keep 
pursuing him. And truths will come about and things will happen. It's, uh, it's kind of like going through boot camp, basically, in the military. It says, or you will allow your own denominational theology to keep you from doing it. The choice is yours. The penalties for disobedience are more severe than you can imagine. I urge you to consider this carefully. Okay, uh, heart and soul. In this ne next group of reports, we are going to deal with the issue of, walk, of the walk to the living Christ by exploring what the Bible actually says about it and comparing that to what modern uh, Christian theology says. We will discover uh, why the vast majority went through in their profession of faith. From that determination, we can be sure that we are not numbered among the many. We have now shown that uh, uh, you that it is possible to believe most sincerely that you are saved and regenerate Christian to believe that you're in union with Jesus Christ and still be rejected because Jesus did not know you. We have seen the outright statements of Christ and some of the parables that it is uh, Jesus knowing us that determines our salvation, not us thinking we know Jesus. I will say that again. It is Jesus Christ knowing us that determines our salvation and not us thinking we know Jesus. So the vast majority of Christians rejected and thought they knew Jesus, but did Jesus know them? He says he did not, and thus for that reason alone, they were cast out of heaven. We have also proved that the reason given by Christ that he did not know <clears throat> them was their failure to be regenerated or born again in truth. They did not have the spirit of Christ, the spirit of agape love. Do we not then have the right to draw this conclusion? Having Jesus Christ know us depends upon authentic regeneration or rebirth. Having Jesus Christ know us is dependent upon agape love bestowment, which is the spirit of Christ for agape love is, is, is Christ. Having Jesus Christ know us through the, his spirit of agape love is union with Christ. So, if this is true, then we uh, have also proved the vast majority of people have a faulty concept of what rebirth or regeneration is, for they are sent away forever. They were positive that they were born again and regenerated, or whatever their theology told them union with Christ meant. We have also proved that true union with Christ is connected to agape love bestowment. We can then conclude that the vast majority of people had a very faulty concept of what agape love really is and how one obtains it. They claimed that they had it. They claimed they knew what it was. They claimed a union with Christ that did not have. Why? We have implied that there is a difference between a conscious heart and soul and the subconscious inner heart. We have hinted that in this area might be another key to find out what happened to the many. Whenever you attempt to bring that which is uh, of the invisible world to graphics or words in an attempt to explain the virtually unexplainable, you run the extreme likelihood of oversimplification and being incorrect because of it. It has been said by those in the modern science that the mind is a, is a final frontier. We know very little about the mind and how it operates, but we do know some things. The Bible does have, have much to say about the makeup of man. And we're going to attempt to, it's, to unravel its comments <clears throat> and then distill them down so we grasp the key essentials. We have some questions that we must ask. Is there a radical difference between the soul and the inner core of, the, of our inner, or I'm sorry, of our heart? Is man's, uh, man constructed just like the tabernacle of old Israel? Does regeneration occur only in the Holy of Holies? Is this where the true union with Christ actually occurs? Is the straight gate and narrow way the diff distance between the conscious soul and the heart and the deep inner heart hidden heart? <laughs> Is that why uh, Jesus said it was full of uh, anguish and agony, full of mental pressure and mental tribulation? Our answers will determine the eternal destiny. Does the image of God, the likeness of God, extend beyond the agape love area? What does Jesus mean when he says that we have a mind, a soul, and a heart? So Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all, all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and all thy mind. This is Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven and Mark twelve thirty. 
And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind, and any neighbor is as thyself. Luke ten twenty seven. There is no question here that Jesus taught. Uh, there are three sections to man in the invisible realm, the heart, the soul, and the mind. I also believe that the sequence he gives is important to our understanding. God constructs uh, uh, or creates everything from the inside out. What is uh, that is to say, he does not build a tree by putting on the bark and then moving towards the center. He starts at the center and moves outward. If this is the case, then Jesus is giving us as a clue as the stepping stones of the invisible realm of man. The heart is the very inner core. The soul is next, and the mind is the outer portion of activity. We should find a verification of this concept, even if we look up the definition of the word heart. As used by Jesus, it does indeed verify that the heart is the center. The expanded vines, expository dictionary of New Testament words, says on page 537 about the heart. The Bible describes human depravity as in the heart. Because sin is the principle which has its seat in the center of man's inward life and then defiles the whole circuit of his action. It is a seat or throne upon which the great I am sits enthroned in the majesty of Godhood. That's where you determine what is right and wrong. When you go in there and start judging people and determine what's right and wrong, you're in trouble. The heart is the very core of human existence. From the heart of man, from this his center, spring the issues of life. It is the heart that lost the agape love essence. It is the heart that Jesus Christ must change. The heart, however, is not considered as a singular essence. The heart has more than one section or layer, according to the scripture. The heart can be divided. It can be doubled, not whole. They speak vanity, every one uh, uh, with his neighbor. With flattering lips and with double heart they speak. Do they speak? The word double here is reality, a mistranslation. It was simply put uh, in there to express something implied. It rea In reality, Hebrew uses the word leb twice. In other words, it says, uh, means center of heart. Leb means center of heart. And this is important uh, to us to realize for what the Holy Testament is telling us is that there are two centers, two hearts, two I am locations. This is the key to what happened and the many Christians uh, that are rejected. If we interpret this exactly as it is written, it means in the most literal sense, two separate and distinct hearts. One heart says one thing, the other heart says something else. Could this be why the Bible says that we must be of a whole heart or with all our heart? Could it be that the many Christians rejected did not worship Christ with their whole heart, with all their inner, I'm sorry, all their heart, They only um, that only one of their hearts was involved? The outer heart, the conscious heart, the conscious I am and will, that the other remained cold and unyielding hardened. If we were to diagram it, it might look like this. So here's the knocks of the inner heart uh, door goes right in there, then Jesus agape here. So it goes down into the narrow way. Now, right here, okay, right down there, that is the, this would be the outside, and this would be the division, which would be your subconscious here. And um, there will be an abyss right here. That would be the abyss. And then between, this would be your subconscious right here. And between this and the abyss would be where you enter or go into hell. And then you go, uh, once you've um, have been claimed and redeemed, you go back into here and then go between this section here, which is the abyss. And then you get into the Jesus agape love um, bestowment there. Okay, so this is right there, straight down your stomach. This is why it feels like you got kicked in the gut um, or when your heart, you know, gets hurt, you get, it feels like you got kicked or you've, you know, that right there. 
Okay, there's a veil right there you're not seeing. You don't see that. And you have to ask him to show you the veil so that he, you can be pulled into the subconscious here. And this is where you have your, your spirit and your soul inside of you is fused together. And you're sitting here on the great I am, judging what is right and wrong. And all that has to be cleaned up. So notice that we have drawn it like a ice cream cones that overlap each other. The center of both represent the two hearts. The center of the outer cone represents the conscious heart of man. That would be this here. That would be the outer cone. Okay. Um, represents conscious man and the conscious I am. In his heart, or in this heart, a man wills to do and operates at, on the conscious level. That's where you do all your judging and all that stuff. You might decide to go to town or buy something. This is done by the outer conscious mind, will, and heart. <clears throat> if I ask you your name, you reply with it. Uh, is This is your conscious, I'm, I am. Okay? The evidence would suggest that this conscious I am is more aware of God, of good, a uh, side of knowledge of good and evil, while the subconscious is more activated by the evil side of this knowledge. That would be the subconscious here, and this is where you're going to be sitting. This is what the inner core is crap, okay? He's got to get into this right here and get this fixed. Okay, the inner heart, the inner lib remains unknown and hidden secret mystery of the vast majority of men. <clears throat> the secret inner heart, mind, and will of man is represented by a second cone. And this is the real true seat of man where the great I am sits upon the throne in the Holy of Holies directing the secret affairs of man. It is this heart that is the target of God, for it is this secret inner heart that must be regenerated for all is lost. Okay? Or all is lost. The straight gate and narrow way are then a way of unmasking the evil within, of unmasking the true nature of the human beast. This is where you have the issue. This is what you do not see. Right here, past this right here. You can't see past it. And Jesus will show you if you ask him, please show me my inner heart of hearts so that I may find you. Okay? Because you're going to be going through the narrow way that's going inside of you. The narrow way is the inside of you. All right? This secret inner heart, mind, and will of man is represented by the second cone. I'm sorry. I'm reading that again. All right, hold on a second. There we go. Okay, blessed are they that keep his testimonies and seek him with the whole heart. The word for whole is, and it means every part, the whole, all of it together. In other words, the two hearts of man, the two centers of man, must be united together to form a complete heart. And ye shall seek me, and find me, and ye search for me with all your heart. Okay, so once you find Jesus back here, this is down in your gut now, in your stomach area. When you see, when you go all the way back to the back, you end up in hell, come back out, and go in through the abyss, and then the door is open, and there's Jesus. There's the light. He'll be sitting back here. Instead of you right here. You're in the way. Okay? The word of it means every part, the whole, all of it, together. In other words, two hearts of man, the two centers of man must be united together together to form a complete heart. Now, the word all here is, and it, as before, it means every part together. The complete heart, the whole, uh, the whole of the pieces of the heart together. And I will give them a heart to know me. And I will give them a heart to know me that I am the Lord. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. For they shall return unto me with their whole heart. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. You get it now? So he was telling you what was going on. The command of the Lord was that the, uh, we agape love with all of our heart, with all of our whole heart, with each heart. If man has a fact, two hearts, two centers, two I ams, 
then the command is obvious. We are to have two centers which are separate, combined, and forged together into a whole unit, undivided, complete, perfect, and this is what Scripture is saying. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to shew himself strong in the, in, uh, in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Okay, so the word perfect here is, is uh, shalom, and it means to be complete. The root of the word is shalom, and which means to be safe, to be complete, to have completed, to restore. It has to do with regeneration, which is what makes a person complete. A portrait is beginning to emerge here that is very important. If God requires that our two hearts are two centers to be combined, and both of them true towards him, then the reverse of that would be that, uh, that if the only one of the hearts was true towards him, but the other was not, we would then be not true, but false in our claims of seeking the Lord. If we, I'm sorry, we be false in our claims of seeking the Lord, then our proclamations are feigned, untrue, false, and hypocritical. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but feignedly said the Lord. That's Jeremiah 3.10. The point God is making here is very clear. If your heart is not wholly turned, if both of your hearts are not united together, then you are feigning your devotion. It is not pure. It is not real. The word feignly is, and it, it means an untruthful, deceit, false liar, vain, wrongfully. Keep in mind that if something is untrue with God, it's vanity. That is vain. What makes this false is that it is not done in totality in order to have this to be true then only one of the hearts is involved and not the other. They are both to be brought together, unified. Is this what happened to the many? Did they sincerely love Jesus with their outer conscious heart and will, but were totally unaware of their inner heart? If they refused the narrow way, there wouldn't be no way they could have done uh, or known about it. For the narrow way is a method God uses to expose our inner heart nature to us. The opposite of feign is unfeign. If we look into the scripture for the word unfeign, we find our references which tell us bluntly what happened to the many. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth throughout the spirit into unfeigned uh, love of the brethren. Okay, see that ye agape love one another with pure heart fervently, being born again. Peter ties together unfeigned agape love to being born again in complete agreement with 1 John 3, 1 and 14. The point here is that if there is an, uh, is an agape love unfeigned, there is a feigned or false agape love. If there is a false or hy uh, hy hypocritical agape love, hypocritical, sorry, then it is an agape love of deception. It pretends to be true, but is false. We know that in Jeremiah, God tied together the fact that if the whole heart is not involved, it is feigned commitment. It is false because only one heart has been changed, not both. The conclusion we have to draw on then is the regeneration being born again, being born of agape love requires both hearts of man and to be combined to be in the total agreement. If they are not, no regeneration can take place. The many Christians rejected had only a feigned agape love because they were not wholly committed unto the Lord. The requirement of God is to find him is to have both hearts totally committed by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by the love unfeigned. It says again, I point out that if uh, there is an unfeigned agape love, there is an feigned agape love. The false teacher had a feigned agape love, a feigned union, a feigned rebirth. It was all vanity. The warnings of the scriptures, the warnings about the many rejected of how the false teachers came come in uh, in with feigned words and a false gospel of salvation all come together here a deception of the many what was uh, was that they were born again when they were not they claimed they were wholly committed into the lord or unto the lord when they were only half committed only one of their hearts had undergone conversion to christ not the other their deception was made by the redefinition of faith the bible also speaks of unfeigned uh, faith the opposite would be feigned or false faith. Now the end 
of the commandment is agape love out of a pure heart and of good conscience and of faith unfeigned. Now, this being said, this is the end of part 30. What I'm going to say to you is this, anybody who is listening to this uh, uh, series, you're welcome to read the rest of the pages uh, from 300 to 739. <clears throat> no one's stopping you from doing that. If this 30-part series does not have your attention yet, it will never have your attention. So there's no reason for me to keep doing these, uh, these uh, uh, recordings. There's no reason for me to do all this for you. You can do the rest yourself. That's why. Because everywhere, there's a, 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 in the next 400 pages, I read to 500, it was becoming obviously clear that we kept going back to the straight gate and narrow way and agape love again and again and again and again. So there was no reason to go from 500 to 739 because I wasn't going to learn anything different than I had learned from uh, page one to 500. So, like I said, you're welcome to do this and you're welcome to keep reading. But if you're not interested yet and you're not going to, you're not even uh, uh, going to choose to do it or whatever, then <clears throat> uh, you're not going to do it at all. So you're wasting your time and, and you have a good day. Otherwise, others are welcome to come because I, I believe uh, we've been told that people that are reading this book are not being allowed to join uh, churches. So you're, well, you're welcome to join the temple, um, uh, the temple of the Rain, or the Rain of the Heavens Society temple. And you can get on um, uh, Telegram with all of us, everybody that is going through this path. Okay, you're welcome to do that, and you have all the support in the world. So thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed uh, the 30-part uh, series, and uh, I, I really do wish you well, and hopefully you make it. Thanks for listening.